Hey everybody and welcome, certainly glad you could join me today. In this video we're going to continue with our code and expand on a few concepts. Thank you to everyone for subscribing and hitting the notification icon, that really helps me out. And thanks to all of my patrons and channel members, your names will be running across the bottom of the screen below. So in order for us to proceed, I need to explain how the dialogue system is actually going to operate. And what we're going to have is a series of dialogues organized into chains of events. And what will happen is each dialogue will trigger in the order of their chain of events based on the criteria that we're going to check against. So the first of those criteria, of course, is whether or not there is a character involved in the dialogue or if the main character is talking to himself. If there is a character involved, then we need to check if that character is present. Then we need to check if there is a specific location required for that dialogue to happen. And if it is, then we need to check that both the main character and the character involved in the dialogue, if there is one, are in the correct location. Hence why each dialogue has a location and a participant and a chain. Now, we could have as many chains of events as we wanted. So you could have as many story arcs as you want, and that would simply be identified by the chain variable or the chain property inside the dialogue class. And then the sequence will tell RenPy which number of the chain of events our dialogue is. Which kind of brings me to the next point in that watching my let's code series is great but when it comes to developing your own games you need to plan a lot of the details out well in advance my advice to you is that if you're going to create a chain of events make sure you write and have the entire chain of events in your mind written down in notepad or wherever you're doing your games planning before you even start coding because it's going to be a real pain for you to have to come back and change things after the fact. So the first thing we need to do now, we've got our dialogue class set up. And what we didn't do in the last video is we need to actually create a list of dialogues. So we're gonna say dialogues, but we're just gonna have it dialogue like that, equals a list. And now we can create uh, a couple of kind of fake dialogues. So we can say dialogue.append and we need to append a dialogue and then we now need to add the properties. So the first um, prop, the first dialogue, I want to be kind of like an intro text. So we're not going to have a location and we're not going to have a participant. Chain of events is going to be zero and the sequence is going to be zero. So it's going to be the first event in the first chain. Now we can simply copy and paste this a couple of times like so and we could now say that our location is going to be the library like this and we could say that our event requires danielle to be present who as you recall is the character that we have set up here and this is going to be event number two so it's going to be number one and that's going to be there and then we'll have the next one where you have to move to another location, but Danielle doesn't have to be present. So let's go to the kitchen like that. And then this one is going to be event number three. So number two, because we start at zero. So now we've got three dialogues in our list of dialogues. So the last thing that we need to actually apply to our dialogue class, which we haven't yet done, is we actually need to create a label. So we're gonna call this LBL as our property. I'm gonna say self.lbl equals LBL, like that. And the reason we need to do this is because we actually need to have something to call. Otherwise, we're not going to achieve anything. So when we create our 
dialogues, we need to put it, strings in there and in there and in there. And for the sake of this video, we're going to simply in our scripts, uh, we're going to create a new folder and we're going to call this chain underscore zero just so that we know where we are. And then we're going to create a new file and we're going to call this one zero dot RPY. So for event zero, and then we're going to call this label and we're going to call it chain underscore zero underscore zero. So we're in chain zero event zero, and we're going to simply copy that. And we're going to go back into our classes RPY, and we can now pop that into that string there. And we could create a new file for the, so we know what this next one's going to be called. It's going to be zero one. And then this one's going to be zero two. And for the sake of simplicity, we are just going to put return there. We need to put a colon at the end of that. We're going to copy this whole thing. And we're going to just have those like that. And all we're going to do in this one is we're going to put some text on the screen that says event zero started. event one started like that. And this is just to test that once we get our code up and running, we want to check that the events are all happening. So there we go. We've got our three events. We've linked to them there. So now we actually need to kind of utilize this code and we need to check that our check function is correct. So We've got global location, we've got global NPC, and we're in the dialog class, so we don't need to put global on that. So we're saying for Q in NPC, if Q.name equals Q.forename or self.forename equals nothing. So if there's no character involved, Need to put another equals in there, otherwise that's not going to work. And we need to put another equals in there, otherwise that's not going to work. So right, we're now saying if the name of an NPC is the same as the name of the person, in other words, this is correct, or it's blank, then we'll move on to the next path check. If q.location, we actually need to change that to, so we need to say if the MPC is in the same location as us and we need to also check that they're all the same, then return true. Now that we've got our list of dialogues, what we need to do is define another class. And this is going to be our chain of events class. So we're going to say class chain. And we're going to have that all capitals like that. And it's going to inherit from the object. And we're going to say def init like that. And it's going to say self. Now we're going to have a a list of events and a sequence property like that. And then lastly, an is active flag there. So what we're going to do is we're going to have our list of dialogues in each one. Then we're going to have where in the sequence of events we are. And then it is active flag so that we can turn our chain of events on or off. So we need to say self dot events equals events self dot sequence equals sequence and we've just found out that events is a keyword so we're going to just change that to event like that like that 
There we go, now it's not a keyword. And then self dot is active equals is active. So now that we've got our chain of events class set up, what we want to do is create a list of them. So we're gonna say chain equals a list for T in range. And we're just gonna create a list of let's say 10, 0, 9. And we're gonna say chain dot append, spell that correctly. Chain, we've got the class there. And we're simply going to have a list, an empty list there. Sequence is going to be zero, obviously, and is active. It's going to be false. So there we go. We've got like 10 at default level. Now all we need to do is populate those chains with any relevant dialogues. So we're going to say for i comma q in enumerate dialog. Now we're going to say temp int. So we're creating a temporary integer equals q dot chain chain temp int dot append dot. Sorry, we need to add a new variable there dot evnt dot append and we simply need to append that with the number i and when we run our code if we were to type in our console print chain zero dot evnt and there you go we've got our list in there let's just check that it hasn't polluted another event and there you go so now we've got our list of events inside our chain class or in a list of chains and that's ready to be used in the next video <laughs> i hope you've enjoyed that let me know what you think in the comments below and i will see you in the next one bye bye